Hey everybody, and welcome back to Crochet Impossible. In this episode, we will be tackling the sporty crochet poncho. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, and I will have the links below. What you will need to finish this project is number one, a US 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now, depending on your gauge, Mine tends to be really tight. You might want to have a larger crochet hook. I found that while using the 5.5 and following the instructions that all my knots and everything were just a little bit smaller. So my suggestion is if it's tight, use a six or even a 6.5 millimeter hook. Number two, they recommend six to seven skeins of the Red Heart Team Spirit yarn. Now, depending on if you're going to be doing the smaller size, the medium size, or the large size of this pattern, you will need six or seven. My suggestion is err on the side of caution, buy seven. This original pattern wants you to buy the colors navy gold, so if you want to stick with their original kind of team spirit team colors, you can find those. There are different colors in the team spirit uh, collection, so find the one that you like. I myself will personally be using the Red Heart Super Saver, and this is in the color Shaded Dusk. Now the reason why I'm using this is because A, it's pretty cheap, and two, I think that my mom would like it. This is a gift for her. Anyways, let's head to the tutorial, and I'll show you some of the steps that I thought were really tricky in hopes that it will help you finish this project. Hey everybody, and welcome to the tutorial portion. Now, as you can see, this is actually a 6.5 millimeter hook. I'm just going to be using this in the tutorial so that I don't have to wrestle with my knots when I'm working on them. But let's go through some of the things you need to be careful of on this pattern. Now, at the very beginning, you're going to be making the actual cow part of the poncho. And that part actually isn't really difficult because you just have to make sure you do half double crochets on one end and then just work in the back loops of the other. So you're going to get kind of like this kind of stretchy pattern right here. Now, the only thing you have to be careful about is once you get to the end of the actual the half double crochet that you don't miss one of the actual loops at the end. You don't want to be losing uh, stitches every single time. So I'm just going to show you quickly. Alright you guys, so I finished one row and then starting on the second one, I'm on the last one here. So as you can see, you're pretty much at like the edge right here, but you have to be careful. There is actually one stitch here and because like I said, I have a very tight uh, type of stitching, you have to be really careful. So. This is one more here, and there is one right in there. So just make sure that you get that and you're finishing off. Because if you don't, then you're constantly losing a stitch each time. So just make sure at the very end you count up your stitches. And for me, because it's really tight, I'm always losing one at the very end if I don't count correctly. Be careful about that. Once you've done that, just make sure you chain one and then flip it over and then start on the backs again. So that is the first thing there that you need to be careful of. All right, onward to the next thing that I think you guys should be mindful of. This is actually the round one of the actual poncho. So this is the poncho, obviously yours is gonna be larger. This is my practice poncho. But I have 16 rounds around here and your job is to be able to work at the ends of these rows on the top and form 16. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to chain one. I've already done that. And you're supposed to single crochet in the top of the row chain two, single crochet in the next, and repeat all the way around for 16. You'll see what I mean. So, number one, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a space here. Now, I use a larger uh, hook because I have this terrible thing called tight knots, where I'm really, really bad at trying to keep everything super, super flexible. But I can't actually find these, uh, these spaces on my original one. But here, I can actually find them really easily. So that is why my suggestion is to figure out your gauge and make sure that you are happy with the amount of tightness or non-tightness that you have. So as you can see here, I already have a chain two space here and a chain two space here. You should have 16 around. Let's finish this and I'll get back to you. <laughs> All right, 16, welcome back. So as you can see, these are your chain two spaces. And here is where the fun happens. So in round two, what they ask you to do is to make sure that you slip stitch in the first chain two space. So as you can see here, this is the last chain two space. This is the first one. So you slip stitch into here, slip stitch. And then you chain three. This will act as your first double crochet. Once you're done, you double crochet 
twice in the same space. So be careful that you're not jumping spaces. You are in the same space. So let's double crochet. Number one. Oops. Oops. Come on. You want to work with me. Number two. Alrighty, and that is your three double crochet. Remember, the chain three is your third double crochet. And then once you're done, you're supposed to go through the entire way around. Now, be careful on the actual pattern, depending on if you're doing the smaller, medium, or large, you need to make sure you count the amount of chains that you have. In this case, here, I have 16. That means that I do this seven times, and then I have to do that special chain three or eight times, and then go around. So the reason why you want to put that in is because once you put those in here and here, it'll actually grow the poncho. You're, you're going to be adding kind of like two double every single time. I'll show you once we get there. So let's do this first. So at this point in your pattern, you would have already gone through 23, 25 or 27 of your double crochets, three double crochets. Once you get to here, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be chaining three. So chain three one two three and then after that you're going to be three double crocheting in here again so what that does is that allows you space to grow your poncho the next round so da, 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 there you go so as you can see we have that extra space here and this will be kind of like the center of where your thing will start and then it'll just kind of grow out here. So what you want to do then after is, you know, finish your 23, 25, 27, go all the way around and then that will finish your second round. All right, I just finished round two and this here is where you're supposed to slip stitch to connect to the top of the chain three you did originally. And that will connect everything. So now you have essentially three double crochet here. This next step, you have to be really careful. So what they want you to do is to slip stitch at the top of these two double crochets. So you're going to slip stitch in this space right here after the first double crochet, which is your old chain three. Oops, come on. All right, then you're going to slip stitch here in the second one of your three. Okay, so you have two slip stitches. You're going to slip stitch one more time, chain one, and then single crochet in the same place as your last slip stitch. And what that does is actually it just creates the top part which makes it more uniform with everybody else. After that, you will two, chain two, single crochet in that. And you'll go all the way around. So chain two, oops, where are you? Single crochet. All right, once you get to that chain three space, you're going to chain two, which I already have here. You're going to single crochet in this space right here. Single crochet. All right. And then chain three to keep that space. Single crochet in the exact same space. And then you're going to chain two and single crochet through the other three double crochet spaces. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating that extra little bit of space. And we're going to get to that once we finish going around. So I'm going to go around and we're going to go to the last step. Okay, so I've gone all the way around with the chain two. I'm at the very end where I will chain two. And remember that slip stitch, single crochet, or slip stitch, chain one, single crochet that we did earlier. So we're going to go find that, which is right here. And we're going to slip stitch and that will create our chain two. All right, so that is round three that's done. Now, once you're done this round, you're just gonna essentially go around and do exactly the same thing back and forth, just rounds four and five back and forth for however long you want. But essentially, round four asks you to slip stitch in this next chain two space. So you're gonna slip stitch here and then chain three. So you recognize this already, hopefully. Chain three, double crochet, and double crochet. So we've done this before, right? So there's only one difference between this and I'm gonna get there once we get to this extra space here. So uh, let's get there and then I'll meet you back. Okay, we are at that chain three space. Now this is where round four is a little bit different. So what you're gonna do is you are going to cram a lot of things in the space. You're gonna three double crochet into that chain three. One, two, oops, come on. 
and three. Yes, there you go. Once you've done that, you have your three double crochets. You are going to chain three again. All right, and then after that, you are going to squeeze in another three double crochets in the exact same chain three spot. And let's go. All right. And there you have it. You have two three double crochets with a chain three. And what that actually does is, if I can show you, it does this. Here you go. So as you can see, you just add two, and you keep on adding two, and you keep on adding two. It just expands the poncho, so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is the shaded dusk pattern that I'm using right now. See how pretty it is? But that's exactly what you're doing. So every single time, you'll chain two, and you'll get that space, right? But then you'll add, and you'll keep on adding and adding and adding. It just makes it wider and wider and wider. And that's what you're doing on both ends. This is just one end, obviously. But this is a tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Please let me know if you need any more kind of clarification on things. PM me or DM me. I would be glad to try and help you guys out. Let's go back to the montage of the video where we finish this and let's hope it looks good. All right, you guys, I hope the tutorial helped. Let's get on this project and let's finish it. So this is 17 repetitions of rounds four and five. And I think the length is pretty good. My mom's actually kind of like this height. So I don't think I need it to be any longer. Yeah, it looks kind of good. Um, I'm actually going to do the optional thing in the pattern where it tells you to do the, the kind of like the fringe part, but I'm going to make it a little bit different. I'm actually going to add a little bit of bead work kind of stuff. Um, for the front, which is right here, I'm actually going to add this bead, close up Matthew, and I'll just show my mom that that is the front of it. It looks really nice. Um, I'm actually going to take this off, put on some more warm clothes. I'm going to head down to our local bead shop here in downtown Victoria called Bead World. I'm going to buy a couple of beads and I'm going to add a little bit of bead work to the fridge just to make it a little bit more, a little more nice just because it's my mom's birthday presents and I figured she wouldn't mind if I kind of splurge a little bit on this just to make it look a little bit nice. Anyways you guys, let's do that right now. So I'm back from Bead World. I got the beads. Um, they're nice and kind of simple, kind of silver metal. I just figured they would kind of complement the really shiny um, kind of blue one that I got for my mom in the first centerpiece. So I got 28 of these because I counted. So hopefully they'll be the exact amount that I need. If not, I guess I'll just have to go for round two of people. But let's finish off the fringe and let's finish off this project. Okay, hey, so um, something that I also decided to do for this poncho is when I was putting it on, I was kind of not very happy with how flimsy it felt around kind of the arm area. So I'm actually going to be braiding two braids and I'm going to be kind of tying the front and back of it together so that way there's kind of like an arm slot for each side. So that way it kind of holds closer to the body rather than being so flimsy. Um, just a word, remember, you know, use more yarn than expected because when you're braiding you do lose a bit of it because of all of like the loop back and forth. But I'm going to add that in and then um, we're going to tie it together and then we're going to see how it looks. It might not work, but eh, whatever. Da, 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 da. I'm finished. So, um, I did end up actually tying the sides here with like this kind of like a braid that you can't actually see, which is kind of nice. But it's right there, so you can actually untie it if you don't like it. But I put it on yesterday night, and it fits for me. So if it fits for me, then it should be even more loose for my mom because she's a tiny person. 
Um, other than that, yeah, so I have uh, the nice bead here in the front to show her that's the front. And I put in these kind of like metal beads here um, from Bead World. And I kind of just did them like kind of offsetted every other one just so that it's not super heavy. The beadwork actually makes it really heavy, so it actually keeps it down, which is really nice. And then on the way, there's like the poncho here. So you guys, when you guys are finished piecing it together, make sure you remember to weave in that end there. But I didn't actually have to weave in this end because I just kind of hit it with the uh, tassels that I made on the fringe here. So I'm done. The only other thing left is to send this over to my mom and hope that she likes it. So let's go do that right now. Okay, so I dropped it off at my mom's and she really likes it, but unfortunately she has some friends over so I couldn't make her kind of wear it in front of me to see if it worked out, but she liked it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time on Crochet Impossible. Bye-bye.